Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Lewis Metzger, the director of New Wine, New Wineskins, and welcome to New Wine Tastings, where we're going to be talking briefly about our upcoming conference that New Wine is hosting here in Portland, Religious Liberty for All. And it's my privilege to introduce to you one of our conference speakers who will be speaking on our plenary panel and then also doing a breakout session, and that is Father Timothy Furlow. He is at St. Patrick's Church, one of the priests at St. Patrick's Church in Portland, and also is one of the representatives uh, who speaks on behalf of the Roman Catholic Church, the Archdiocese of Portland. Father Tim, thank you so much for joining us for this call and for joining us for this new wine conference, Religious Liberty for All. Good to be with you. Thank you. So, uh, Father Timothy, Father Tim, uh, why does this conference uh, matter to you as a Roman Catholic leader here in the United States? I mean, as a Roman Catholic leader, uh, Catholic thought and Catholic theology is very, very focused on the reality that freedom is part of our very nature. It's, it's something that God has woven into the constituent elements of, of what we even are as people. And so we're sort of de facto automatically concerned whether humans are able to exercise that freedom in whatever country they find themselves in. So a conference like this is, is critical when it comes to specifically seeing if humans can exercise that aspect of their nature concerning their beliefs in, in the metaphysical or in God. Hmm. And I'm really grateful that uh, you'll be speaking as a representative of the Roman Catholic Church because it's one of my convictions, contrary to what some in our broader pluralistic society may think, but Roman Catholic thought has been indispensable for the development of global civil society in uh, the world at large. And so to hear from you on this subject will be vitally important to our conference. Um, what themes or issues, Father Tim, uh, come to your mind when you think of religious liberties in our multi-faith pluralistic American context today? Uh, well, you know, my uh, training, the training a little bit beyond seminary that I have is in moral theology. So moral theology is essentially the, the intersection of the discussion of our faith and ethics. It's, it's that little crossroads there. And so I think of primarily moral issues. It seems to be that when freedom degrades in a society, one of the first things that occurs is that morality is legislated in a sense. And so there are certain subgroups that can become harmed, can become damaged by larger groups that might have more objective legislative power saying, you can do this, you can't do that, you can say this, you can't say that. And so in a real healthy society, we should all be able to, to believe and express what we truly believe in a peaceful way. Hmm. And certainly Pope John Paul II was someone who was well versed in that whole discussion and was very concerned for that in his own encyclicals and, and of course other uh, popes as well. But I just immediately thought of Pope John Paul II in his own context and experience this wasn't part of the questioning, but I couldn't help but ask your thoughts on that and just uh, certain individuals that you think in the Catholic tradition have been so key in developing that trajectory that you just articulated. Mm -hmm. Well, you bring up St. John Paul II. He was, not many people know this, but he was really actually quite instrumental in, in bringing down uh, the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, bringing down that, that wall. And, uh, his experience as just a regular Polish citizen, um, also at times living under fascism, mm. really informed his ability to, to do that. And so I think the core of, of what he was saying in a lot of his writings were from his personal experience of seeing people have part of their humanity removed from them mm. by taking their freedom away from them. Mm -hmm. So it's very Thank valuable you. work that it gives us. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, how does your Roman Catholic tradition, further to what you've already said, inform this conversation, whether it's a particular theological motif, a social theorist orientation? What, what would be one or two trajectories that you would wish to highlight that may come into play at the conference itself? 
Well, I would hope to, to highlight, um, kind of like we said, but taking it a little further, that freedom is just part of being human. Mm -hmm. um, and that means very critically that it can't be violated. It, it's an inviolate thing. So it's important to understand that everybody has to retain it. But it's also important to understand that it's not a freedom to do anything whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's a freedom for excellence, as we call it in the Catholic Church. So God has given us this freedom so that we can pursue the end of our being, the purpose of our being, which is him, which is goodness itself. So we can kind of attach to all kinds of good objects and assent to good objects in this world. That's what our freedom is for. It's not to kind of do whatever we feel like in the moment. Sometimes those things actually harm us and harm other people. So it's a, it's a freedom for excellence. It's a freedom for goodness. That's what I hope to, to bring to the conference. Wonderful, thank you. And then lastly, what are your hopes or what would a hope be that you have for this conference and the discussion that we have coming out from it that with such diverse representation from across the religious and shall I say philosophical and ideological spectrum in our society will be represented at the conference. What is your hope or hopes uh, that you would um, wish that we'd all aspire to coming out of this conference, religious liberty for all? Mm. Honestly, I my core desire is, is pretty basic. I would hope for a base level of agreement. I would hope that we would all be able to agree that religious liberty is objectively important and that in order for us to, to sustain the society that we've built, we have to respect it in each other's own particular circles. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we could leave even with 5% more agreement in that area, and be able to live peaceably our, our faith and our beliefs in this nation, I think it'd be a smashing success. Well, I certainly hope that's the case for us all at the conference. And Father Timothy Furlow, thank you so very much indeed. Father Furlow, as I said earlier, is a priest at St. Patrick's Church in Portland and is a representative uh, and a speaker on behalf of the Archdiocese of Portland. Thank you very much for your time, Father Furlow. And this is Paul Lewis Metzger, the director of New Wine. New Wineskins, thank you for joining us for New Wine Tastings as we prepare for our upcoming conference, Religious Liberty for All, March 14th, a Saturday here at Multnomah University in Portland. Thank you.